Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial on how to take your stereoscopic photos and turn them into wigglegrams. This particular tutorial is going to show you how to create them using Photoshop. However, other types of photo editing programs should work just as well, as long as it's somewhat similar to Photoshop. I have another tutorial video on this channel which will show you how to create your wigglegrams using a video editing program such as Premiere Pro. Whatever program you decide to use, the results will be pretty much the same. The main advantage of using Premiere is being able to bulk edit a lot of photos easily. The link for that video is in the description if you'd like to check it out as well. Now this video in particular is going to focus on photos that were taken on the CineLab 3D printed Wigglegram lens. If you'd like to learn a bit more about this lens, the link for that is also in the description below. The method for creating Wigglegrams in this video will also apply to photos that were taken on film cameras, such as the Nishika or Nimzo style cameras. The only difference being that you'd be working with 4 frames rather than 3 frames. Before we get into the tutorial, I'm going to outline some important shooting tips that will help you when it comes to the editing stage. When you're shooting, it's important to keep your camera horizontal to your subject and make sure that your horizon is as level as possible. Also, in particular, when shooting with the CineLab lens, it's important to keep your subject directly in the middle of the middle frame. And in terms of composition, keep in mind that you should have elements in your foreground and background that will overlap and create some visual interest within your image. After taking your photos, the first thing that you want to do is take your raw images and perform some basic color corrections and add a filter if you want. You can do this in a program such as Adobe Lightroom or any other program that's similar to that. From there, export it out as a JPEG and now it's ready to be processed into a Wigglegram. Now that all of that is out of the way, let's get into the Photoshop tutorial. Let's start by opening the image in Photoshop. First thing we want to do is just click this lock icon here. Now the next thing we need to do is bring in some guide frames which we can overlay on top of this photo. What that's going to allow us to do is see exactly where to make our slices in order to split this image into thirds. So to do that, let's go to view, guides, and then new guide layout. So right now for me, it's showing eight columns, but we actually want to change that to three. And gutter will change that to zero pixels. Hit OK. Now, as you can see, it's brought in these blue guide frames, which now perfectly divides our photo into three. So from here, we're ready to make our slices. To do that, let's go over here and click the crop tool and go down and select the slice tool. And what we'll do now is slice each of these frames individually. So we'll start by slicing the left frame first. We're gonna click on this first guide frame here and drag it over to the second guide frame. And if you've got snapping on, you'll notice it'll snap to the second guide frame, just like that. So when it snaps to the second guide frame, let go and it'll automatically make our first slice. Let's do that to the second frame. Click on the second guide, drag down over to the third one, wait for it to snap. And again for the third one, drag it down. And there you go. We have our image perfectly sliced into thirds. So now we're gonna export these slices as three individual images. And then we're gonna take those images and bring them right back into Photoshop in a new document, which is where we're gonna build out the actual GIF itself. So let's go up to file, go down to export and choose save for web. I'm just gonna go down here and zoom out and that'll allow me now to select the entire image. We'll go over the preset and make sure you choose JPEG high. Then next to quality, slide that over to 100 because we want the best quality possible. Go down and hit save. And I'm just going to name this slices and save it directly to my desktop. And what it's actually going to do now is save those three images into a folder, just like that. And when we open it up, we can see now each of those slices are their own individual image. Now, to avoid any confusion, because these images look alike, we're actually going to go ahead and rename each of them. So for this first one, we'll name it L-1, which stands for left photo or first frame. The second one, we'll name it M-2, which stands for middle photo or second frame. 
And finally, the last one, we'll name that R-3, which stands for right photo or third frame. Now that we've done that, we're ready to bring these photos back into Photoshop in a new document. And this is where we're gonna to start to build that GIF. So let's click on the first photo, open with Adobe Photoshop. Just gonna go over here and click that lock icon. Let's go back to our other photos. And we'll highlight the other two, the middle and the right ones. Drag it over onto that document. We'll just hit done here for both of them, just like that. Just gonna go over to this first layer and rename that back to L-1. Also, you don't have to name these layers. I'm just doing it for the purpose of this tutorial, but it definitely does help to name them just to keep track of what's what. We're now at the point where we're ready to create our Wiggleram GIF. And I'm just gonna explain what we're about to do. We're going to take these three frames and overlay them on top of each other. We'll align each photo by choosing a focal point in the center of the image which we'll use as a pivot point for the Wiggleground parallax effect. Your focal point should be on your subject, which should be in the middle of your photo. The focal point could be a person's face, a piece of jewelry, their sunglasses, or anything that is small and easy to track throughout the three layers. In my case, I'm going to align my eyes up, and in particular, there's a small white sparkle in my eyes that I'll use to identify and align throughout each layer. So now let's go ahead and line up these images with each other. First, go to the third layer and toggle the visibility off. Then make sure to select the middle layer, go over to the opacity and drop that down to 50%. So what that's going to allow us to do now is see through the middle photo down to the left photo below it. And we can now align our focal point on the middle photo with the exact same focal point that we see on the left photo or the first layer. So let's zoom right on in. And again, we're going right up to my focal point, which I mentioned is my eyes and in particular the white dots here. So make sure you've got the move tool selected and we're now just gonna drag this photo around and line it up as accurately as possible. And what I recommend doing is using the move tool to get it as close as possible. And then from there, use your arrow keys to do the minute adjustments. Let's zoom out. And just to double check that is aligned correctly, I'll go over to the opacity slider, click on it, and I'm gonna drag it down to zero, and then slowly drag it back up to 100. And I'm just gonna do that back and forth a few times. That'll allow me to see if it's aligned perfectly. I'm happy with how that looks. So now we're ready to move on and line up the third photo. So let's make sure to select the right photo, make sure the visibility is on. And then once again, drop the opacity to 50%. Make sure our move tool is selected. And we're now gonna line that right frame with the middle frame. Don't be afraid to zoom right in close, it always helps. We'll zoom back out and adjust the opacity. So as I slide it back and forth, once again, I'm making sure that those two layers are aligned and just making sure that there's no slight jump or bump between the frames. And this is looking really good, so I'm happy with that. So now that we've aligned our three photos, we're actually ready now to create our animation. So to do that, let's go up to window and we'll go down and select timeline and hit create video timeline. We'll go down to the bottom left corner here and click these three small squares. That's gonna convert it to a frame animation. Now, as we can see in our timeline, we've got one frame here that has a duration of five seconds. If you click that arrow next to it and go to other, this box will then pop up. And this is now gonna allow you to choose how long each frame is gonna go for in your animation. So obviously five seconds is way too long. So what I'm gonna do is punch in 0.08. Now I find that to be just the right length for a wiggle gram. You can experiment with having it longer or shorter, but for me, I think 0.08 works. Let's go and hit okay. Now, as you can see, that number at the bottom there has been updated to 0.08. So that's how long that frame is gonna last for. Now we'll go over to this box here with a plus in the middle and hit that two times. Now we've got three frames. And now what we want to do is essentially assign each of these frames to their respective image. So frame number one here will be assigned to the left frame or first photo. And frame number two will be assigned to the middle layer or frame number two. And the third frame here will be assigned to the right photo or the third layer. 
Let's go over and click the first frame. And all we need to do is just untoggle the visibility for the second and the third layers, leaving only the left photo visible. Now let's go over and click the second frame and now we'll toggle the visibility for the middle layer and untoggle the layer below it. Now we'll go over to the third frame, uncheck the left photo and turn on the right photo. And now we've got each of these frames assigned to their own photo. As you can see below the frames, there's a small play button. If you hit that, it will start to play back our GIF and we can finally start to see it taking shape. So right now, as you can see, our GIF is moving from a left to right motion, but that's only half of it because a full wiggle gram effect is a left to right and then right back to left motion. So to do that, we'll make sure to select our third frame here Go over and click the square box of the plus net three more times, making six frames total. If you click on the fourth one, it's currently assigned to the right photo, which is exactly what we want, so leave it like that. Head over to the fifth frame and assign that to the middle photo, and then head over to the sixth frame and assign that to the left photo. So now when we play it back, we've got a swinging motion where we're swinging from the left to the right, and then the right back to the left. Now, as you can see, we have a small issue. We can see some edges at the top and the right of the photo. So let's tidy that up. So what I'm gonna do is select the third frame, which is usually where it's showing the most edge. And we'll go up to that slice tool and swap it out for the crop tool. Now, all we gotta do is just bring in that right side, getting rid of that edge, bring in the top. And I'm even gonna bring in the bottom a little bit as well. And remember, this crop here is going to apply for all of our frames, not just the third one. Hit done. And then go down and hit play. As we can see now, the left is showing a little bit of an edge. So let's fix that as well. Hit the crop tool and just bring in that left frame a little bit. You can also zoom in so you can get a bit of a closer look. Bring it in just enough to you're covering that edge. Hit done. And now let's play it back. As you can sort of see on the right hand side, there is a little bit of light leak happening, which is a natural artifact from the lens. Some people like it, some people don't. If you don't, you're welcome to crop in the right side to remove that. But for me, I sort of like the look. It kind of reminds me of actual film, like on the Shike camera. So I'm going to leave it for now. And now our GIF is pretty much complete. All that's left to do now is export it. So let's head up to file, export, and hit save for web. I'm just gonna zoom out here so we can see the full photo. Let's go up to preset and make sure we select GIF 128 Dithid, which is the highest quality GIF. All these other settings you can leave as is, and then go down and hit save. I'm just gonna name it Wiggle and save that to my desktop. And there we have it, our final result from Adobe Photoshop. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to leave it a like. And if you'd like to learn more about the 3D printed CineLab lens, the link is in the description where you can check it out and purchase one for yourself.